7.40, morning to you. Let's see what's in the papers today with social campaigner and everyone's favourite plumber, Winston Davis, <laughs> and political... <laughs> well, it's true! <laughs> right. I like that. It's true! <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> yeah! Well, I mean, everyone loves a plumber. Come on. I mean, and political <laughs> consultant, Emma Burnell, who's not bad with a screwdriver, <laughs> either, Emma. Well, my family nickname, ironically, is Plumber. Oh, well, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> there you go. We're all sorted today, if we've got a leak anywhere. Uh, Winston, let's start with you, should we? Sunday Times. Um, the post office... Um, the former post office chairman told to stall compensation payments. Mm, yeah, so this uh, Henry Staunton, um, he was told to stall it, so basically so that the government can keep more money in its coffers um, leading up to the next election. Um, I mean, it's insane. You know, you've seen this uh, documentary that's gone out. There's 726, is it? 726 postmasters were prosecuted. It totals out of total payment over 400 million that should be coming to them, and they've only paid out 126 so far. Right. It's like, look, these people, some of them have committed suicide, they've lost their, their, their mm. livelihood, they've lost their reputation. Just pay them the money. Pay them the money. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I don't know if I. I'm, I'm sort of loath to believe this. Whichever political party <laughs> was, was being accused of this, I would loathe to believe this, Emma. I mean, it's. It's certainly worth taking with a pinch of salt because the person who said this is the person who was sacked by this government. Mm. Um, but it does, I think, speak to a sense that people have about the government, that they understand the cost of everything and the value of nothing. Um, and, frankly, uh, while to you and I... 400 million plus is a huge number. Actually, in government spending terms, it's a rounding error. Yeah. Um, and f you, when I first saw this headline, and, and Winston will, will agree with this, I was my thought was, oh, they're saying uh, that's been said by the opponents of the government so they can keep the story alive. Yeah. Because that my immediate thought was, you know, the, the slower they go with these compensation payments, the worse it looks for the government, not yeah. better. Yeah. But there's, but, uh, apparently but actually, it's to is... reduce the government's financial liability. Yeah, which is before just the election. Absolutely crazy. But the government spokesperson is saying this is incorrect, and not the so case. It, I mean, and again, yeah, because this is coming from somebody who was sacked by this government, it is worth taking with a pinch of salt. But it does, as I say, I think speak to a narrative that people do have a sense of with this government, that they are very good at understanding cost rather than value. I mean, it's just one of those things. I mean, if, if, if politicians don't get this, Winston, mm. by now, that the public just want this sorted out, they want mm. justice to be done mm. as far mm. as it ever can be with something like this. Yeah, 100%. And... Um... The, the post office, their actual lawyers, though, are saying that they're going to appeal some of these... Uh... <laughs> it's yeah. like, like, listen, you, have you not done enough damage? You know when yeah. there's that, that yeah. saying, you know, when you, it's time to stop digging? Yeah. Yeah, yeah? stop digging, mm. give them the money, let them get on with their lives. Yeah. yeah, and then if you want to claim as much as you can back from Fujitsu, fair enough. Yeah. But pay the money. And as you say, some people aren't here anymore oh. and others... <sighs> might not have long left. So well, at and least yes, and give them the years financial redress they need. Lives. Oh, yeah. I don't think you can put a figure on that. Obviously, no. they have to put something on it. But it just, you know, for goodness sake, just get on with it. Yeah, stop messing about. OK, uh, independent Emma... Mental health ward scandal. Police failing to get justice for mental health patients who suffered alleged sexual violence in hospitals. Uh, yes, this is a horrific story. Um, there's a, a, a huge... So, well over uh, 1,500 complaints of sexual abuse, violence, rape within mental health wards and hospitals, um, and only 24 actual prosecutions have been brought. Um, and Goodness me. It's a, I Any mean, of those resulting in conviction, do we know? Uh, I think there are some ongoing. Um, right. But it's, it's just obviously such a, a small percentage of those complaints. Uh, and these are obviously people who are in incredibly distressing circumstances. Mm. And you just understand that at that point you are so vulnerable. Mm. And... It must be so hard to make that complaint in the first place because you mm. know that as a mental health patient, what will happen is you'll, the, you'll, you'll, you will be questioned. Uh, uh, yes, well, and, and ro rightly so. Uh, absolutely, but, um, but, but it also makes it, even it makes harder. it so much harder for everyone involved and it just feels like, once again, um, there is a scandal. We had this uh, about a month or so ago with... Um, 
alleged uh, sexual abuse on NHS wards. Mm. Um, we know that the conviction rates for rape and other sexual crime are so low that it's almost been decriminalised. Um, we are... This is a scandal of how these, these crimes are being treated and what's happening with them. OK, let's, let's move on to the Sunday Mirror, Winston. Um, and this is a call from, from the mother of, of uh, a young lad who died in a car accident, along with several other people, um, saying, bring in new laws mm. so that if you're under 25, mm. you can't have any passengers. Yeah, for, I think for a year. So they call for it a, a year. Yeah, so they call it a graduated uh, driver's license. Do you know what? I'm massively in favour of it. All right. 17 years old, first car I had, three months in it. I'm booming down towards a, a roundabout, mini roundabout, 75, 80 miles an hour, <clears throat> fishtailed around, two passengers in, s slid out, went through, flipped onto the other side of the road, oh, went through you. a couple of trees. <sighs> And the one, one guy that was sleeping in the back as late night, one o'clock in the morning, smashed through the, <gasps> the, the po a post through the, the, the um, door. Luckily, he got through because he didn't have a, his belt on. And then we just stopped. And my point is, is that I was there thinking, is anyone dead? I didn't want to look. Mm. And that's because you're such an inexperienced driver. Well, I'm, they always say you learn to drive after you pass your but test. this is it. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm definitely in favour of it. This lady needs 100,000 signatures in, in Parliament for it to be discussed. But also it's the element of, well, the distraction, chatting to your mates, mm. and also a bit of showing off. Showing million off. percent. Yeah, yeah. Especially with lads. Absolutely. million percent. I mean, that same roundabout, I tried two or three times during the daytime to go faster and faster, seeing how fast I can go. And in the, yeah. mid the middle of the night, it was obviously too... F <laughs> you know, it's crazy. I mean, I, re yeah. I remember, Emma, when I was a, a teenager and friends had already passed their tests before me, and my parents... I used to have such rows with my mum and dad because they'd say to me, you are not getting in a car with them. Yeah. They've just passed their test. Yeah. Yeah. We will pick you up mm. from that party. And honestly, I used to feel so... so it, it almost made me feel like I was less popular yeah. because yeah. I wasn't jumping in the car with it. Now I get it. Mm. I mean, I didn't learn to drive until I was in my mid-30s, actually. I didn't... I took passed my test first time, but I was about 34. So, you know, it, it's not something you can... But I do think I'm a better driver because I learnt at that age and I was just that little bit more mature. Um, so I, I don't think we should stop kids passing their tests, but I think this seems like a sensible compromise. And yeah. Winston's yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. right. I mean, I remember the first time... So having passed my test, I then did a big, big drive practically the next day. Um, up to Wales and back from oh, London gosh. Uh, for a wedding. So not only did I do it in one direction, I did it in the other direction, hung over. Uh, so, but it, it, in many ways, that was a sort of baptism of fire. Oh, yeah. Um, because by the time I came back, having done all of that driving, I think you know, that yeah. experience gave me much more confidence. But I do feel like... I. I don't think I would have been nearly as good a driver. You don't with have the, the same, awareness, with do the you? With the same licence as I would have had yeah. at 17. Yeah, as a that awareness platform. only comes through driving and driving and driving. Absolutely. Yeah. 100% also, yeah. you know, our, our actual brains don't develop fully yeah. until we're in our mid-20s. The you know, prefrontal cortex, which is all about decision-making, risk-taking, things like that, it hasn't developed for, mm. for year, another seven, eight years when you've got, you're able to drive. Yeah. Yeah. So by delaying it just so that they can get that experience, even if they are going to maybe do things they shouldn't do. At least they've got the more There's skills a to be able to... Yeah. A little yeah. bit, yeah. 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 Oh, well, let us know what you think about that one. If you pass yeah, your so... test and you're under the age of 25, you're not allowed to carry passengers for yeah. a year. And, you know... What do you think? GBviews at gbnews.com. Good on Crystal Owen. Her son, Harvey, only oh. died three months ago. Mm. And she's already... And trying to bring something trying to make change from this happen. tragedy. I think yeah. that's an extraordinary thing. Yeah. Um, uh, now, working from home, oh, here we go again. Uh, this is in The Observer this morning, Emma. So, on one hand, we're being told if you work from home, you can eat healthily, be less stressed, have lower blood pressure, blah, 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 blah. But they're also saying we eat snacks, drink more mm. and smoke more at home. So, yes, it's kind of... They've done this very, very interesting um, study, sort of mul study of multiple studies. So, what this is where they've brought all the evidence that's been collected together. Mm. Um, it's... Really interesting, it's quite nuanced. Um, it's saying that generally people who say people who are working from home are lazy are wrong. Uh, they're actually more productive, less likely to take sick leave. Um, but there are also circumstances. So people in 
nicer houses, bigger houses, are much happier working from mm. home than those in smaller places, particularly small places with young children, mm. where it's much, much harder to be productive under those circumstances. So it's one of those things where there are definitely benefits and disbenefits. And I think we can all grow up and have a much more nuanced conversation about whether, you know, it, the idea at the moment, it's amazing, it's terrible, yeah. it's somewhere in the it's, middle. It's about <laughs> your home environment. I mean, we couldn't do it here. <laughs> Although yeah, I have I done spoken to you down the line, I don't think yes, you can you interview have. me. I can, me I can believe the, the, the feeling less stressed business because if you do travel by train, mm. the number of delays that we get. But I think also the office environment can have very different effects on different people. If you're a very sociable person, um, the office environment can be great because you can chit chat with your mates, but you don't get that much done. If, on the other hand, you really need to work in quiet circumstances, actually the office environment, because of all the chit chat, can be really, really unpleasant. Yeah. But if you are one of these people who is more quiet, um, actually, you need to be put into a, into a busier environment. You, mm. Otherwise, you just become more and more insular, which is what we're seeing with kids nowadays. Well, I agree. I mean, I think we do need a balance. This mm. is, yeah, like all things, uh, a balance needs to be found. Yeah. Do you have a view on this? Uh, do you know what? I'm all for people coming into offices working or to a place of work. Obviously, we can't fix heating systems remotely <laughs> no. just, just yet. Oh, I wish no. you could. That'd be... <laughs> but, but um, you know, people coming... Something can be said for people coming into an office, actually seeing people, having that physical yeah. Yeah. Yeah, interaction. And actually, in terms of output, you know, people can get away with so much, let so much slide when they're working from home. Mm. But this, this is saying the exact opposite. These studies are saying that they are more productive. They're not, you know, there's this sense that people are getting away with it, but actually they're working longer hours, taking less sick leave and being more productive. But again... But having a cheeky fag and a glass of wine. But also that. having a cheeky <laughs> fag and, and that five o'clock glass of wine that you but wouldn't then, have until seven if, if they're not commuting. doing the travelling, yeah, that could be saving yeah. them three hours a day. Yeah. So it's it swings uh, around about. I just think it? it's a bit of a two tier system. You know, it's like well, if you that is the problem. Yeah, yeah. If, if you've if you've got a white collar job, fine. Mm. If you've got a blue collar job, mm. well, you can't do it anyway. So yeah. it's like well, the the have nots have to go in and do. I think a bit of a hybrid. Way. Look, like so. A couple of days a week, come into the office, two, three days in the office, two, three days at home is a bit of a balance there. Yeah, but a lot of the organisations I work with do exactly that in order to have that, that perfect balance of knowing each other, having interesting and difficult sometimes conversations, but also that productivity you can get from working at home. Yeah. Um, can we just quickly end on Emma Sexy on Ice, which oh, has caught my yeah. attention? What, oh, what is this sure. about? Uh, so... <laughs> I wonder what that is. <laughs> oh, tell me more. So the gorgeous Greg Rutherford, who, frankly, I've had a thing for since at least 2012. Have you? Um, he has been told by his girlfriend that he's not pulling the sexiest of faces when he's doing his dancing on ice. Uh, and he needs to be smiling more and being more of the twinkly man that she knows. Because uh, apparently he's been gurning quite a lot and pulling very serious faces. Right. So she's so got to be... Actually, will he want to do... He said, do you know what? I know Greg. A Do you? A little bit. I oh. just want to introduce you. Yeah, well, um, I'm afraid I've seen pictures uh, of his girlfriend I haven't got a chance. But. He's, a, he's, a, he's a really, really nice... I don't know him very well, but he lives not far from me and occasionally I bump into him in B&Q. Well, there oh, you go. There but so, I suppose that there's, all, there's, there's so many stories. Buying paint. We're both buying paint. <laughs> he's a lovely man. He's a really lovely, nice bloke. You can understand he'd be a bit nervous because there are so many stories about... Dance partners getting a little bit close to each other, well, and now, then it, the it, gossip starts. To be starts. fair, the girlfriend is the one telling him to be sexier, um, so clearly she's not worried about that. And well, it might, well, it might benefit her so, in their private is, life is, as well. Has your, your wife ever told you to be sexier? Um, no, not not as yet. But if she if she wanted to, and then um, you know, <laughs> each to their own. <laughs> <laughs> Very thin ice you're on. Uh, we'll see you both a little bit later on. Is whoever.